Hey guys, how's it going today? Today I wanted to speak about the subject of does the soul exist? Well, that's again a very difficult subject to have because the problem is, is that some people will say that there is and some people will say that there isn't. Well, for me, I'm kind of biased because the thing is, maybe as a teenager, as a young person, you kind of believe in magic and all these things. And uh, yeah, you believe in the soul, you believe in the afterlife and all that stuff. For me, I'm not really sure about that. The problem is, is that um, everything is done inside the brain through chemistry. So if you really think about it, um, if you inhibit yourself with something like alcohol or any kind of drug, um, it's going to affect the way that you think. It's going to make you do things differently. So if you're doing things differently, then it means that the actual body can be affected by the substances that go inside it. And at the same time, if you really think about it, then if you have any kind of brain damage, then your personality is affected completely. Well, the thing is that in the regular definition of soul, you would think that it's an extra ordinary, some body that's outside of your physical appearance that's somewhere in the ether and that no matter what happens, even if your exterior body is um, taken away or is destroyed or whatever, that soul in its essence would still exist. But then how come that if you are hurt somehow in some part of the brain and it's damaged, then it doesn't function in the same way. Your personality can drastically change. And the thing is that, okay, you could say, well, because um, the communication device within our brain is kind of scattered, kind of like a phone that has no good reception and you can barely hear the person. It could be said the same that if you damage the brain, then whatever is inside can't communicate properly with the body and it's not uh, giving the right directions, if that makes sense. But how can that be? Because even if it wasn't giving the right directions to the body, the thing is that basically it still wouldn't make you do bad things, it still wouldn't make you do stupid things because you just would not get that instruction, if that makes sense. And that's why it's very hard to say that the soul exists. Um, except if we think of the soul as something completely different, as an essence that has no particular thought or meaning, it's just energy. And if the soul is just energy, then it could make a little bit more sense. Because after all, we are energy as human beings and as anything that is living on this earth, even if it's animate or inanimate, it has a sort of energy. And you can uh, directly uh, basically measure that with a bunch of devices and you see electricity. And electricity composed of positive and negatives is definitely going to give you uh, energy, you know? And the whole universe, starting with the Big Bang, was obviously created through energy. So if you think of the soul as not something that has a personality and as just energy, then that makes sense. But then at the same time, what is happening is that even inanimate objects also have energy. So what happens is that it means basically that everything has a soul. Every single cell, every single object, every single particle in this universe basically has a soul, which is basically energy, if that makes sense. So Yes, if you think about it that way, it 
actually is very possible that souls exist but then soul basically is another word for energy source for life if that makes sense so how do we create that energy i'm not really sure i think what's happening is that you can easily create the energy uh starting with the big bang because the energy created by that was super big but then also what created that energy before that because technically it can't just explode without energy so something must have also created that and at the same time when you think about that then that means that if there's matter there's antimatter because for each positive there's always a negative for male there's female for plus there's minus for multiplication there's division etc 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 you know eyes hot so everything even our eyes we have two eyes we have two arms there's always a sort of backup a sort of yin and yang to everything so the thing that's funny is that we are not really sure what's beyond the universe but at the same time what you think about is that for every positive again there's a negative so definitely once we get past our universe that is still expanding supposedly up to infinity then there's also what's beyond that which is actually the antimatter and it's of course a distance that's so huge that we wouldn't even be able to get to it but in uh, places like CERN uh, in Sweden um, they're able to uh, create antimatter in very small forms and that's again translates to energy so the soul can exist or cannot exist but it's really reliant and dependent on what you believe the definition of soul is if you think soul is something that is basically your personality that's going to be kept even after death i don't believe in that you can believe in that if you want but scientifically if you really look at it it's energy and if you want to think that soul is energy it has no reliance on personality and it's just a sort of positive or negative energy form then yes it makes sense because at the same time for example all the air we breathe all the stuff that's inside our body is always going to give us some energy and it's also going to become part of us so what happens at death basically is that you would um, basically get eaten by all these different uh, things in the earth and then you become energy and it gets recycled in other forms of life be it trees be it nutrients for the earth be it uh, the ants the mollusks the worms it's a bit sad and scary to think about it that way but then at the same time it's kind of cool because in some way we are the children of the stars by that what that means is that when there's meteorites that have crashed on earth um, they had uh, different uh, sediments and stuff like that on it including water um, and once that was able to combine itself with earth and the appearance of really good weather within it then we were able to actually how can i say we were able to create an energy that had a consciousness and even our consciousness in some way is basically uh, trial and error and luck so yeah we're able to be conscious about this world because i think a lot of things are not but they're also conscious in their own way if that makes sense but i mean either way that's my definition of soul you can take it for what it is everybody has different beliefs but that's what i believe so have a great day and i'll talk to you guys very very soon